Lord, this Canaanite woman pressed Jesus for help for her bedeviled child. So her persistence was rewarded with the healing of her child and our Lord's blessing of her with these words, O woman, great is thy faith. There is, I think, somewhat of a bridge between today's gospel lesson and the epistle. And I think it's linked with these verses. First of all, from Thessalonians, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. And from St. Matthew, then Jesus answered and said unto her, Woman, great is thy faith. And so the bridge is simply this. How does one possess great faith? And the answer is, of course, by being holy. Or is it possible to be holy without great faith? Let's take a moment and see what being holy really means and how do we get there? Well, assuming that being holy simply means that we are to be Christ-like, there are several experts that we can turn to for advice. First of all, Paul gives us three steps to being Christ-like in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. Number one, Paul tells us that we have to change our way of thinking. We have to get away, in essence, from our foolish, sinful way of living. We have to put off hateful desires, evil living, and come to an understanding between what's good and what's wrong. And secondly, he tells us we must be renewed in the spirit of our minds. In other words, we have to take a fresh spiritual attitude. I think the psalmist got it right when he wrote in the 51st Psalm, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Number three, and probably the most important of the things that Paul tells us, he said we have to put off our old self and put on a new self. That's sort of like taking off some old, dirty, grungy work clothes, showering and putting on clothes that are fresh and clean. It makes us feel like a new person. The Old Testament book of Leviticus tells us, For I am the Lord your God, and you shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. Don't just go with the flow. We have to separate ourselves from the ungodly and develop a high moral sense. You know, it, it bothers me, I think, somewhat that modern society seems to regard holiness as some kind of outdated, legalistic, prohibitive concept that's simply just not important in the way we live our daily lives nowadays. In other words, being holy gets in the way of things we want to do. I mean, rather than being holy, I'll just go fishing on Sunday morning and not go to church. Or rather than reading my Bible, maybe I'll pick up the latest edition of Playboy magazine. Or rather than being holy, maybe I choose to spread some unfounded rumor about my neighbor. Rather than being holy, we can choose from dozens of things that are worldly ways to be unclean, unholy. Now we've talked a little bit about holiness, and I think we kind of understand what being holy is all about. But what does that have to do with faith? In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus told the woman whose child he healed, he told her, great is thy faith. Well, where is this relationship between being holy and being faithful? Well, is it possible to be holy without being faithful? Of course not. Paul tells us in the fifth chapter of Galatians, but the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and, pain and kindness 
and goodness and faithfulness. Now, if we look closely at today's gospel lesson, it's about an unforeseen fate and a most unlikely person. It's about a Canaanite woman. This woman had no religious credentials. She had no claim to faith. She had no personal agenda other than her love for a very sick daughter and her total confidence in Jesus. She certainly was not given to religious display. And while it's clear that Jesus uncharacteristically dismisses her, this little lady is persistent and faith-filled. You know, faith comes in all shapes and sizes, including the one initially put off first by the disciples and then by the Lord herself, himself. This Canaanite woman knew that Jesus was the only hope that she had. And so she didn't want to waste any time. She was desperate for anyone who could help her. She was compelled to flee to Jesus as the only hope in saving her child. I think she was kind of like the woman who was filling out an application for a new job and was puzzled by the blank after the words that read, person to notify in case of accident or emergency. Finally, she wrote, anybody in sight. <laughs> the woman in today's gospel lesson probably felt the same way. As she fell at Jesus' feet, she begged him. She begged Jesus to cast out this devil from her little kid. She had a need. And she truly believed that Jesus Christ had the answer for her problem. The 20th Psalm says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we must trust in the Lord our God. Paul tells us in Romans the 12th chapter, God has given to every man a measure of faith, and that measure is Jesus Christ. Not the only faith, but it is the only great faith. There's one thing about faith that we need to remember. Great faith demonstrates persistence. Perhaps you know the story about a Scotsman named Robert de Bruce who in 1306 was trying to become king of Scotland. And he was on a path that was difficult, full of all kinds of obstacles, both military and political. And he seemed to be losing on every front he faced. And so one day he was sitting off the north of the Irish coast, contemplating his future, and he started to watch a spider dangling on its thread as it tried unsuccessfully to swing its way from one side of the small portion of the cave to the other. So after many, many tries, it finally succeeded. Robert watched this with great interest. He was amazed at the spider's persistence. And so this simple act of nature inspired Robert the Bruce to continue on his noble pursuit. And eventually, he became the King of Scotland. Great faith often requires great persistence. You know, we're living, sadly, today in a world of great despair. And despair, when it rules the human spirit, causes sometimes a loss of hope. In many cases, it separates us from God to the point that it often contributes to our being unholy. Even Paul at one time in his life, he said, we're so utterly unbearably crushed that we're despaired of life itself. Paul was human. But this coming from the greatest evangelist that ever lived. But you know, even at the end of his rope, Paul had persistence. He tied a knot and he held on. He 
to those in despair, to those for whom life is tough. God has the power to deliver if they are persistent. Now faith certainly involves a growing recognition of who Jesus Christ really is and when we know, when we truly know Jesus, we're led to holiness. When we have the faith, it allows us to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We're no longer unclean, but we're called into holiness. And to have a faith in God means that we trust Him. We're certain that what He says is true. It means that we believe in Him and we rely on Him and we're assured that He has for us the truth of eternal life. And so, since God is always with us through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're able to draw on Him for the help and the strength and the courage and the guidance and the comfort that brings us to true holiness. And I think that's a truly wonderful and comforting faith. And my prayer is that our may our faith have the kind of greatness that leads us to the holiness that God expects of us. Amen. Amen. Amen.